Good evening, universe. Tonight I'm going to be talking all about Taylor Swift eras, but as books. So taking an era and then assigning a book to it that seems to fit. I got this idea because Folklore came out pretty recently, her latest album, and a lot of people have been talking about how good it is. And I totally agree, I'm one of those people. But I also really loved all of Taylor Swift's other albums, so I kind of wanted to talk about all of them because I am a huge fan of Taylor Swift and that's pretty much all my reasoning. So we're gonna start with her first album named after herself. It was just called Taylor Swift. Honestly, I didn't have that much experience with this album. I mostly became a fan when Fearless came out, but I know that it is a very youthful album where she's first trying to discover her sound and her style, making herself a facet of the music industry. It's very rustic. It definitely has the most pronounced country twang of all of her albums. Two books that I think fit this are Shadow Magic and The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. Shadow Magic is by Joshua Kahn. The Fairyland one is by Catherine Valent. This one is the first in a trilogy and one of the main characters, Thorn, is a very country sort of boy. So he's grown up outside of any of the world's like cities or palace life, things like that. He's been very off in the country. He's very simple and straightforward and he uses a bow and arrow and is quite talented with it. Here's a, a picture of him. I love this book series. It also includes a giant bat named Hades. This book is also funny and lighthearted. It's a middle grade book, which I thought was appropriate because the first album is so youthful. And this is really about beginning to find yourself, experiencing new things, meeting new people, and discovering who you are with those foils. There's also a lot of undead magic, so that fits less but I still thought it was a good match. Then The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland is also centers around a protagonist who has a more country-esque upbringing. She lives with her mom, her mom who is a, uh, I believe she fixes airplanes as her job, but this is set in the past. There's some kind of a war going on, so it doesn't say exactly when this is supposed to take place, but it's definitely not modern day. So there's this really rustic scent. And then it follows September as she enters Fairyland and begins to explore an entirely new world, which I also thought was an apt metaphor for Taylor Swift entering the music industry. All right, next up we have Fearless. This is when I became a fan of Taylor Swift. I heard her songs from this album, specifically You Belong With Me, and I have been a loyal fan ever since. So the books that I think match the feeling and mood of this album are City of Bones by Cassandra Clare and Fruits Basket by Natsuki Takaya. So a lot of the themes in Fearless are pretty similar to the themes that I saw in the Taylor Swift album where it's about self-discovery, learning who you are, and identity in a new sphere, a new world. I thought this was really appropriate for both Fruits Basket and City of Bones, because in Fruits Basket, the main character joins the Soma family, which has some magical aspects going on. They have a curse that they have to deal with. And then with City of Bones, our protagonist, Clary, enters into the world of the Shadow Hunters and learns all about downworlders, demons, and angels. So they're both stepping into new areas of the world, learning about who they are in those new contexts. Also, one of the songs on the album is called Fearless, which I thought resonated nicely with one of the runes that we get to see in the Mortal Instruments series. Also, a couple of the songs are about finding your place in high school, such as 15, and both of these books follow protagonists who go to high school. Another standout track on Fearless for me was The Best Day. I always interpreted this as being about Taylor Swift's mom and her relationship with her, 
and relationships with the family and particularly mom are central points inside both the mortal instruments and fruits basket in one of them the character's mother has uh i believe fallen into a coma and in the other one her mother has died but you get lots of flashbacks about what she was like and how she really shaped the protagonist so that's why i thought those two fit they both also deal with your kind of first heartbreak your first love and fall out from that, how tumultuous and powerful and devastating it can be. Just like the album Fearless. Now we've got Speak Now. So for this, I chose Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare and Crier's War by Nina Varela. The big themes for me in Speak Now are standing up for what you believe in versus an antagonistic force. You see that really in songs like Speak Now and Mean all of those really about the narrator digging in their heels and refusing to be pushed down by something or in the case of better than revenge you know actually going out of your way to torment the person who has slighted you with that in mind crier's war is great because one of the main characters is primarily motivated by revenge she essentially wants to kill this young lady who is the daughter of the current ruler so that she can exact revenge on that ruler for losses that she's suffered. With Chain of Gold, less of a revenge. I mean, there are definitely some revenge elements with one of the antagonists in here, but also Speak Now is about stepping in between two people who are about to get married and really disrupting that. And there's definitely some of that going on in Chain of Gold. Also, the song Enchanted really brings up a sort of glittering ballroom type scenario, which also makes me think of Chain of Gold because a lot of the settings are similar to that. So for Red, I went a little bit more obvious. I chose three books. The first one, for possibly obvious reasons, is Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. And kind of by extension, the rest of the Lunar Chronicles but mostly Scarlet because the album Red is centered around really intense, really emotional feelings and moments. The protagonist, Scarlet, from Scarlet, feels everything super intensely and often is extremely hasty. I feel that the title song really represents exactly what she's like. You know, falling head over heels in love with somebody no matter how heartbreaking it's gonna be. That's what Scarlet is about. I also chose Red Queen. Again, just the, the red makes me think so much of the consistent color theming in the Red Queen series, which is kind of a stretch, but it still made me, you know, it, it has a connection to me. The last book that I chose for this was The Reader by Tracy Chi, and I picked this one not because of its like emotional tumult, but because on the album Red, Taylor Swift starts to get a little bit more experimental. She throws some dubstep in there. She moves back to her country roots at some points and then goes full pop at other points. And the kind of experimentalism that she gets into in this album, I think, is pretty well mirrored in the way that Tracy Chi gets experimental in The Reader. She has different media types incorporated into it and, and it's really interesting and engaging and different. For the album 1989, I only have one choice, one pick. What I went with was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. The reason I picked this is 1989 is Taylor Swift's first 100% full pop album. She completely leaves behind her country roots and goes directly into pop. And originally I wanted to pick something that is a little bit more metropolitan to kind of reflect that, the more metropolitan sound, but, but I couldn't really think of any books like that. So instead I wanted to lean into the kind of soft glamour vibes that I get from 1989 and the sort of doomed romance in Wildest Dreams that really, I think, reflects some of the attitude that the main character has for her romantic interest. I also felt like the extra use of polish and filters and those sorts of things that Taylor Swift uses on the album 
were reflective of the way that the main character Lei has to be much more polished than she ever has been before and she has to kind of put up a front and lean into a new form of femininity in order to survive in her new circumstances. And then we enter the reputation era, which has a much more industrial dark sound as compared to her previous albums. It's a lot less subtle. It is very straightforward and has this real sense of like being a badass, being this awesome, incredible, like untouchable warrior person. You see that in like I Did Something Bad where the protagonist is just shamelessly doing villainous things. Just the whole sound of the album is very dark and a little bit gritty. So for this I chose The Cruel Prince by Holly Black which follows a extremely tough protagonist who despite being that super awesome warrior chick type of character, she still comes off as very sincere and relatable to me. Then we've got Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. You have this kind of dark, gritty city that the main characters hail from, and then all of them doing various morally gray or straight up pretty evil and selfish things. So I felt that that was fitting for kind of the narrative voice that Taylor Swift was going for on this album. And also And I Darken because Leda, the protagonist of And I Darken, really just likes to murder people and has no shame or concern about doing that. She does whatever she needs to in order to be very strong and I think that's the same kind of vibe that Taylor Swift was going for. For Lover I have three books again. Carval by Stephanie Garber, Timekeeper by Tara Sim, and the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. Lover is probably Taylor Swift's happiest album. It does have some moments of sad self-reflection and heartbreak, but for the most part it's like this celebration of love and friendship and romance and it's this very beautiful pastel thing. That's really the vibe that she puts out on the album. I thought Carval meant that perfectly because everything is really vibrant and colorful. A lot of it has to do with romance for the two protagonists as well as their bond as sisters and how important family is to them. So I thought that was really appropriate. I mostly picked Timekeeper because of the song London Boy which is one of my favorites off the album. It's so catchy and fun and you just really enjoy listening to it, which is really similar to how I felt about reading this book. Also, to make that clear, the, the main protagonist is from London. So, like, it makes sense, I promise. This is, I think, a good story about both the way that love can ultimately win, but that also doesn't excuse some morally questionable behavior, the way that love can be all-consuming, even in terms of not just romantic love, but familial love, the way that Julian acts around his siblings in order to protect them, and the depth to which he feels. Also, Emma, the female protagonist, is extremely talented with a sword. She's like the Jace of this series and I felt like that resonated kind of nicely with the song The Man where Taylor Swift talks about what her life could have been like if she had been born a man. And finally we have Folklore. Folklore is the musical equivalent of having your heart broken but in the most exquisite way possible. I chose two books that create that feeling in me of yes my heart will be broken, but I'll be enjoying myself way too much to do anything about it. Perhaps an obvious choice, Strange the Dreamer. While there are definite notes of hope and joy infused in Lainey Taylor's writing, the whole book is uh, pretty devastating and the ending is... I just... Ugh. The first time I read the ending and I didn't know what was gonna happen, I... I was pretty devastated. It was a really heart-wrenching conclusion. Muse of Nightmares is also extremely heart-wrenching the entire time that it's happening, much like folklore. It surrounds the the pain of love, wishing things could be different, lots of death, 
some of the similar themes that folklore has. And then the final pick for this is the All the Wrong Questions series by Lemony Snicket, which may accidentally come up in every video where I talk about random books. It is about, it has a very similar sort of low-key, subtle, sense to it the same way that folklore does and it also has some very heartbreaking moments as well as some really just powerful lines. One of the reasons I love all the wrong questions so much is because of the prose and I think the beauty of the prose in all the wrong questions is really well reflected in a lot of the beauty of the prose in, is it called prose of the lyrics in folklore? Well, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about Taylor Swift as books. Tell me if I should link other things to things. Did that make sense? Like books to video games and music to more books, that sort of thing. I definitely had a good, good time with it. I think it's a lot of fun to kind of draw these cross media parallels. Also, let me know what you would have picked for each of Taylor Swift's eras if you're a fan or if you know a little bit more about her arrows now, or if that's boring to you, maybe pick um, songs or artists that, that could reflect the books or some books that you like. Yeah. Either way, thank you so much for hanging out with me while I rambled on about two of my greatest loves, Taylor Swift and books, and have a good night, universe.